In this video, we're going to look at a legal problem called reorganize the string. So given a string s, re uh, rearrange the characters of s so that two, any two adjacent characters are not the same. So return any possible rearrangement of s or return empty string if not possible. So you can see here we have an example of aab, right? The output is aba. Um, so you can see that no two adjacent characters are the same. And you can see here this is a valid answer, right? So ab is not the same as b, uh, ab is not the same, and then ba is not the same, right? And then let's say we have another example like this where s is equal to a, 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 b, right? In this case, um, we're going to return an empty strain because in this case, it doesn't matter how we arrange the characters in the case. In this case, because if we rearrange the character, we still have two adjacent characters the same, right? So if I move the b somewhere like here, so a, b, a, a, or a, a, b, a, or um, in this case, a, a, b, right, will not it will not be the valid answer. So in this case, we're just returning an empty string. Um, so the constraints is that we're guaranteed to have at least one character in our string. And then um, all uh, for the string, we're going to have only lowercase English letters, right? So in this case, one, one, um, one solution you might be thinking of is that maybe we can just put these characters right into a table, right? Uh, we basically use a table to keep track of each character's frequency. And then, for example, A appear two times, B appear one time, right? And then what we're going to do is that we're going to iterate the table starting from the maximum frequency. And then basically what we're going to do is that we're going to add A onto the string, right? So this is our string. We append A. We decrement that by one. And then we move on to the next element in our table. In this case, is B. So we add B onto it. And then we delete B, right? Now B is zero, so we delete B. And then all we have left is A, so we... So we basically iterate the table again, right? While well, the table is not empty, so we just add eight again. And then we delete A, and then now the table is empty, so this is basically how we arrange the, 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 um, the table, right? So, and then let's say we have a situation where, you know, in this case, we have A is three, and then B is one. So we can do the same thing. So we add A and then we add B, right? So B is deleted. And then we add a right so now a is basically one right so and then what we're going to do is we're going to add one we're going to iterate the table again right so now we have no a's at all and then we realize that the, the current character and the is equal to the previous character then therefore in this case we can just return empty string but there could be another situation like this right where let's say we have something like this, where V, 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 L, O, right? So the ideal solution is that V, L, V, O, V, right? So let's say we have a table like this to keep track of each character's frequency. And then we starting to iterate the table, right? Starting from the max frequency, so V, L, O. And then what's gonna happen is that we only have two Vs left in our table, right? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna add a V here, right? And then we decrement that V by one. And then we start over, we iterate the table again. So we add the V again. So now you realize that we have an invalid answer, right? So in this case, the table is empty, right? So now you know that the, the answer is invalid because in this case, you can see that the V is the same as the previous character. So therefore, this is not a valid answer. So in this case, but there is a valid answer for this string. In this case, this one right here. So let's say if I go back to this one right here, right? So in this case, uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is that this is our, going to be our max heap, right? This is our max heap, right? Our max heap, basically, we have, we have the most frequent elements on the top of the heap. And basically, what's going to happen then is that um, we're going to take the, the most two frequent elements out of our heap, right? So we're going to have V and L, right, out of it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a string. We're going to have V and we're going to have L. And then we're going to decrement that frequency by one so now we have two and then this one's zero so it's gone okay and then what's going to happen then is in this case we're going to just add a v back to the heap right so now we have this right and then what's going to happen is that we're going to take the top we're going to repeat the process we're going to take the top free frequent elements out of the heap vo right so we add vo onto it so then what's going to happen then is i'm going to decrement or modify the table right so now o is zero and then V is now one, right? So what's gonna happen then is I'm going to add the characters back onto the heap, right? But now O is zero, so I don't have to add O back to the heap. So I just have to add V onto the heap, right? And then I then I repeat the same process. 
But then what's going to happen is that the heap, right, has a size that's in this case is uh, equal to or less than or equal to one. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to break the heap, we're going to break the loop, right, and then we're going to add the last character onto the heap, right, which is basically v. So in this case, basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to perform greedy um, algorithm and try to add the most frequent characters, um, two most frequent characters onto the string at a time, right? One, uh, two characters at a time. And we ensure that those two characters um, basically are most frequent, right? So we want to make sure we add the most frequent two characters, uh, one, uh, two at a time, right? Code, basically, you can see this is what we're going to do. We're basically going to store all the characters frequency onto the table, right? So for each and every single character, we're going to increment the, the, their frequency by one. And then we're going to have a string builder, a max heap, and then we're going to add all the characters onto the max heap, right? And then what we're going to do, you can see how here that the max heap is basically sorted by the frequency, right? So what we're going to do is that while the max heap is has a size that's bigger than one, right? While there is uh, there's more than one elements in our heap, right? Because like I said, like I mentioned before, we're going to add two characters onto the string builder, right? We move two characters out of the heap at the same uh, at a time, right? So in this case, we want to ensure that the heap have at least two elements in our heap, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, first, remember, take out the most frequent elements out of it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to modify that, modify our table. And then we take the second most frequent element, and then we modify the table. And then what we're going to do is that if the map.get current character, right, the first character, the most frequent character, if it's bigger than zero, then we add the add it onto the max heap, right? If it's not, then we don't add it onto the max heap. Okay, and then we do the same thing for the second character as well. Um, so you can see here, basically, this algorithm, this part of the code you can see here, um, it takes a login time complexity for insertion deletion. But imagine that we're basically have to do that for each and every single character, right? That we have in our in our uh, in our string. So this will give us a, a login time complexity. And then what's going to happen then is if let's say if we have a situation where the max heap is not empty, right? So the only condition that we that we have to break is where in this case if the max heap dot size is less than or equal to one. If it's less than or equal to one, then in this case we break, right? So let's say we have one character left. If there's only one character left, right? So if map dot get the top element, if that character have at least more than one frequency, then we just have to return empty, empty string, right? Uh, frequency that's bigger than one that we just have to append it onto the string, right? If there's only one character uh, and then that, that character has only frequency of one, then we just have to append it, right? If it's bigger than one, we just have to return empty string, right? Because we cannot have uh, two same characters uh, right next to each other, right? And at the end, we should basically just convert the string builder to a string. So that's basically how we solve the problem. And like I said, again, the time complexity in this case is going to be in login, right? So this, this will be one way we can solve it. But the other way we can solve this problem is we can use a bucket sort, right? So basically what we're going to do is that let's say we have a string like this, right? We're going to have our bucket one. We're going to have each and every single character's frequency. So A appears three times, B appears three times, C appears one time, D appears two times, right? This is our first bucket. And then our second bucket, basically, uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to have the frequency as the key and then the value is going to be the list of character who has the same frequency right so you can see that three is the frequency and a b has the same frequency they all have a frequency of three um, d has a frequency of two c has a frequency of one right so you can see here this is our second bucket and what we're going to do for this bucket sort is that we're going uh, we're going to have our second bucket and we're going to use this second bucket and we're also going to traverse the array, right? We're gonna have a array with size of our current string. And then we're going to have, uh, we're going to traverse this array first, even index, right? Zero to four, right? You can see A has, uh, ha a, ha has a frequency of three. So we traverse the array uh, basically three times for A, right? And then in, th in this case, what's gonna happen is that we're going to, for each and every single time, we're gonna uh, basically iterate uh, three times, right? We're going to traverse the array um, even num even index, right? So zero, index zero, index two, index four. And then for the next index, in this case, we already visit 
A three times. So now we move on to the next character, in this case is B, right? So we add B here, add B here. And then once we reach like to the limit where there's no, uh, we're basically out of bound, then what we're gonna do is that we're going to start from index one, and then we're going to traverse the array uh, in odd numbers, right? In odd uh, index, right? So we're starting from index one, and then we know that we visit, we basically, um, uh, basically add B onto the stream uh, or add to the, the array three times already, right? That's the frequency of B. So we add C, in this case, C or D, doesn't really matter. So in this case, we add C, right? But let's let's just say we, sh we should add D, right? Let's say we add D and then add C at the end. So you can see here, we add D and we visit that two times, right? In this case, we add two, add one and add two. And then we know that we add D two times already. So then we move on to the next character, in this case, C. So all we have to do is we just have to add C onto it, right? So you can see that we basically traverse the array in even indexes, and then we traverse the array in odd indexes, right? We circle back and then we traverse the array odd indexes to add those characters, right? And we basically just going to go from the max index, right? In this case, the max frequency to the smallest frequency that we have in our string. So in this case, in code, uh, this is what we did. So we basically store all the characters frequency onto a table. And then we do our check. This is really unnecessary, right? We basically check to see if the base case, um, in this case, if the max count is bigger than the uh, the half size of the string, then we know that there, there's no way we can be able to assemble a valid answer, right? So in this case, we just return empty string. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna build our second bucket. So the second bucket, you can see here, we basically get the frequency as the key and then the value is gonna be the list of characters who have the same frequency, okay? And then basically you can see that we're using the bucket one to build the bucket two. And then once we have our bucket two ready, we can be able to um, do just like I mentioned before, right? We starting from the max count, right? So you can see the max count is getting from here. So we going to, we're not gonna go from the maximum, like the length of the array. We're going to start from the max count. So the max count is basically the maximum count uh, maximum frequency, right, throughout the entire uh, strain array. And then we're going to start from the max count, working our way down to the smallest count, which in this case, the smallest count have to be one, right, have to be, in this case, uh, in this case, one, right? So first we check to see if bucket count contains this uh, count. If it doesn't, we just continue. Otherwise, we get the list of characters who have the same frequency, right, F for the current frequency. So in this case, we're going to iterate each and every single character that we have in our list. And then for each and every single character, right? Once we get our current character, um, uh, just like I mentioned here, this is our character, right? And then what's gonna happen is that we're going to um, basically uh, check to see, right? If the current character is equal to the previous character and index is one, right? So what's gonna happen is that let's say if we have like a lot of A's here, right? So let's say we're circled back, we traverse the array in a uh, e even indexes. And after we traverse the array in even indexes, we're gonna traverse the array in odd indexes, right? So in this case, if this character is the same as the previous character, so then we know that this is not a, a valid answer, right? So in this case, we can just return an empty string. And then what we're gonna do is that for the current position, right, we're going to get assign it to the current index, right? Cur sorry, current character. And then we add the index by two, right? Um, and then if the size of the, if the index is beyond the size of the string, then we just set the index to equal to one to make it uh, starting to traverse the array in all indexes, right? So basically you can see this is how we solve the answer. And then at the end, we basically use a string builder, uh, convert the characters that we have in result array onto the string builder, and then we just convert the string builder to a string. So you can see this is how we solve the problem, and then this is basically how we convert, or how we bring down time complexity from uh, a log n to a log n time complexity.